With the Boston Celtics season start just two days away when they play the New York Knicks on Wednesday, the Celtics have been making moves this past weekend. Cutting a guy in Wenyon Gabriel from a training camp deal, which means the Celtics have an open roster spot, and signing Nathan Knight to a two-way contract, and also cutting one of the guys on a two-wheel deal. We have all of that to break down for you guys on this episode of Celtics Digest. But before we get into any Celtics news, I would like to say that 88% of our viewers are not subscribed, and would greatly appreciate it if you guys hit that big old red subscribe button and join the Celtics Digest family. We can't thank everyone enough that's already hit the subscribe button we're at 1.7k view subscribers and i can't thank everyone enough that's already hit that subscribe button we're rapidly growing and we want to make sure that we can produce the best celtics content so if you want to make sure that you get your celtics news trades rumors post games and you want to catch up on lives and shorts hit that subscribe button and join the celtics digest family we'll have that covered all for you guys throughout the regular season and playoffs but let's get into the news at hand today which talks about the Celtics signing Nathan Knight to a two-way two -way deal. Welcome to Boston, Nathan Knight. Now, Nathan Knight has had some stints in the NBA. He played with the Minnesota Timberwolves last season and played on the Knicks this preseason. He was played against the Boston Celtics in two preseason games, and he did pretty solid against the Boston Celtics, and that is why the Celtics decided to pick him up on a two-way two -way deal after the end of the preseason. As you can see, Wojnarowski reported that Nathan Knight is signing a two-way deal with the Boston Celtics, and that means he's going to be able to transfer with the main clause and with the Boston Celtics, which will be a good pick of speed for him, as on the Timberwolves, he wasn't one of their guys in their main rotation. As you can see, we also see from Keith Smith, Keith Smith confirmed that they waived Jay Scrub in the press release to sign Nathan Knight. So now our three two-way guys on deals are Namus Keita, J.D. Davidson, and Nathan Knight. Jay Scrub, even though he did get waived, the reason he was waived is because he tore his ACL in practice. He was supposed to be a standout player for this G League team, and I was very high on Jay Scrub this season for the main Celtics. Unfortunately, he's not going to be with the team, but he will be rehabbing with the team and still getting to use their facilities to rehab his torn ACL, and hopefully next season he will be able to participate on the Celtics on a two-way deal in the future. But let's look at Nathan Knight's stats. Nathan Knight last season averaged 3.7 points, 1.5 total rebounds, and 0.3 assists off of 57% field goal shooting, 36% three-point shooting, and around 68 free throw percent shooting. So Nathan Knight, even though he hasn't had the biggest opportunity in the NBA, has looked as a promising piece. As you can see, those numbers aren't the greatest, but he is going to be playing with this G League Celtics team. He's not going to be on the main roster. He's one of the lower guys, but he still can make an impact for this G League team as the Celtics are known to have one of the better G League teams in recent years. I love when they sign impactful guys that have played NBA minutes that can help out in the G League, and then maybe some of these guys can grow to be actual rotational pieces. We've seen with guys like Sam Hauser for the Boston Celtics, and guys in the NBA in general like Fred Van Fleet kind of led the movement of G League guys actually turning out to being great players in the NBA and finding their roles and maybe even turning into superstars. And that could definitely happen with a player like Nathan Knight if he were to develop and be a solid piece for the Celtics. Obviously, it's a far stretch, but we want to assume the best for the Celtics, and I think that Nathan Knight could be an impactful piece for the Celtics if he works on his game. But let's talk about the other exciting news that happened with the Boston Celtics, more opening with their regular roster, with them opening up a roster spot. So if you guys do not know, the Boston Celtics at the moment before had 15 technical roster spots full. They had 13 actual guaranteed contracts and two training camp deals, one in Lamar Stevens and one in Wenyon Gabriel. Both of those players came and played in the preseason, expecting to make the final roster, but unfortunately, one of them didn't, and that was Wenyon Gabriel. The Boston Celtics decided to waive him, and what that means is that we have an open roster spot, and the Celtics now could bring someone in via a trade if they were to do a two-for-one, or they could sign another free agent. Now, this is good for a contending team, as it gives us a lot of options for the Boston Celtics. Now, a guy like Lamar Stevens, since he did not get waived from the Boston Celtics on his Exhibit 9 10-day contract, I would assume that he has insured himself a 
full guaranteed deal and that he will be on the Celtics rotation going into the start of the season, which would then leave us at 14 guys. Now, what my three options for the Boston Celtics are is they could ultimately, one, go into the season with a free roster spot, and that's totally fine. A lot of teams do this. It gives them some flexibility at the trade deadline if they want to do a two-for-one trade, if they want to jump in on a trade as a third team possibly, or even if they want to flip a pick for a player later on in the season if there's an injury or a specific need or a niche player that they find that's on the market, they could go and acquire that player. I think that's a smart move from a front office standpoint, but it does limit you in the amount of players you're going to use. But on a normal night, you're only going to use usually 9 to 10 unless you're playing a back-to-back and need to give some guys rest. But that's what the two-way guys are for. Next, you could ultimately go out there and you could sign Namus Keita to a standard contract as he looks like he's going to be emerging as the Celtics backup center as he played over Wenyan Gabriel and obviously didn't get cut. And he was playing over Luke Cornett in the last preseason game. It's looking like Namus Keita will be getting those backup center minutes for the Boston Celtics, which I'm very, very excited about. But could he be converted into a regular contract to being your final finalized piece on the team and then you could sign another two-way guy a younger guy that you would want to develop alongside Nathan Knight and JD Davidson the only drawback with that is is that Namus Cato can play 50 games on the Celtics automatically on his two-way deal so you're kind of just wasting a roster spot if you're just going to be using him for a majority of the year you can just bring him on as a standard contract later on in the season when it's necessary when you need him for the playoffs and then that's when you can go and explore and look at another two-way piece to bring in And then lastly, what the Celtics could do is they could realistically go out in the free agent market and go find another center that they would like to pick up. There have been plenty of guys that have been cut and that have brought up. I know people have mentioned DeMarcus Cousins. People have mentioned Dwight Howard in the comments. Personally, I'm not big fans of those guys, but a guy like Ken Birch, who I've mentioned in the past in a recent video, he's still available off waivers, and I think he could be a solid piece. Maybe even have a guy like Darius Baisley as well, playing a small ball four, small ball five. I think he's a viable option for the Boston Celtics as a third to fourth center or forward. And I think that these pieces are available still, and the Celtics could go after them if they want to. Ultimately, what do I think the Celtics are going to do with their final spot? I think that they're going to realistically just let it be. They're going to run into the season with 14 guys. And if an injury were to happen or if a guy is to underperform, they may flip a pick with a player or flip two players for a better one to get to make sure that this team is content for competing for a championship. But I want to know what you guys think in the comment section below. So let me know in the comments down below what you think the Celtics should do with their last roster spot. Should they A, either keep it open and enter the season, B, give name as K to the 15th spot and sign a third guy to a two-way deal, or C, should they ultimately go sign a guy like Kem Birch or another big man in free agency and keep name as Kata on a two-way deal for the season? Let me know what you guys think in the comment section below. I love reading your guys' comments. If you guys are still at this point in the video and you guys are not subscribed, make sure to hit that subscribe button as we know that you guys like the Celtics content if you're still here and would greatly appreciate it. I'm Bruce Velez. I'll catch you guys in the next video.